this is Courtney with NCLEX Bootcamp. Antidepressant medications are really common and there are some very specific things that the NCLEX expects you to know. So let's get started. Before we dive into the different classes of antidepressants, let's start with what all antidepressants have in common. First is that none of these medications work overnight. Antidepressants usually take several weeks before the clients feel their full effect. This means that one of the biggest teaching points is encouraging clients to continue taking these medications consistently, even if they don't notice immediate benefit. Now here's a critical NCLEX safety point. All antidepressants can actually increase the risk for suicide, especially in children and adolescents. And that is why close monitoring, especially during those first few weeks of treatment is so important. We also need to be on the lookout for serotonin syndrome. And this is a potentially life-threatening complication that happens when serotonin receptors get overstimulated. And this is most likely to occur in clients who are taking multiple serotonergic medications like SSRIs, SNRIs, MAOIs, supplements like St. John's wort, and even tryptin medications that we use for migraines. Now, the easiest way to recognize serotonin syndrome is to remember your three S's. The first S is for sweating or fever, which are signs of autonomic dysregulation. So we might also see symptoms like high heart rate and high blood pressure. Our second S is for shaking. So we might see things like tremors, hyperreflexia, or muscle rigidity. And our third S is for strange behavior. And this refers to the mental status changes we might see with serotonin syndrome, like agitation, confusion, or even hallucinations. So if you see an NCLEX question where a client on an antidepressant suddenly develops tremors or muscle rigidity, fever, and agitation, I want you to think serotonin syndrome and recognize this as a medical emergency. So you need to hold their medication and contact the healthcare provider right away. And finally, we don't want to combine any antidepressant with St. John's wort. This is an herbal supplement because as we just talked about, St. John's wort is serotonergic and it will significantly increase the risk for serotonin syndrome. Now let's take a closer look at the specific considerations we need to know for each of the antidepressant classes. We're starting off with our first line antidepressants, which are our SSRIs. That is our selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. And examples in this class include citalopram, fluoxetine, paroxetine, and sertraline. Now these are our go-to medications for depression and anxiety disorders because they're considered a safe and effective class of medication. And while they're generally considered a very safe class of medications, they do come with some side effects with the most common ones being GI upset. So it's often recommended that clients take these with food. Sexual dysfunction is also really common. So we need to be sure that we're asking clients about this. We also might see sleep disturbances and clients might notice that either they're more tired or they can't fall asleep very well. So we might need to adjust the timing of the dose depending on what they're experiencing. There is also a rare but important risk to mention and that is that SSRIs can increase bleeding risk, especially for clients who are taking NSAIDs or anticoagulant therapy. This has to do with serotonin's effect on the platelets and their ability to clot. And some additional teaching points that we need to make sure that we're aware of is that we want to teach clients who are taking SSRIs to not stop these medications abruptly. This is because sudden withdrawal can cause unpleasant flu-like symptoms and also mood changes. So we teach clients to not make any changes without first talking to their healthcare provider. And lastly, we have that NCLEX tip again of that SSRIs do not start working right away. Clients need to know that these medications can take several weeks before they start taking effect. So we need to emphasize consistency and a little bit of patience. Next up are our SNRIs. These are our serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors. And this includes medications like duloxetine and venlafaxine. Now their name also gives away their action. They increase both serotonin and norepinephrine. So while they're used for depression, we need to remember that they might also be prescribed for neuropathic pain like fibromyalgia and diabetic neuropathy. Now the side effects of SNRIs are very similar to SSRIs. So we might also see side effects like GI upset and sleep disruption. But because of that norepinephrine component, SNRIs can actually increase blood pressure. So it's really important that we get a baseline blood pressure before we start an SNRI and continue to monitor it throughout treatment. Also, we never want to give an SNRI to a client with uncontrolled hypertension because it can make blood pressure even higher. All right, it's time for our first NCLEX quick check. Do you remember how long it takes for antidepressants to start working? 
Well, remember, we said no antidepressant works overnight. All of these medications take several weeks to become effective. So we need to teach clients to keep taking these medications consistently, even if they don't notice immediate benefit. Next up, antidepressants increase risk for what major safety concern, especially in the first few weeks of treatment? Well, remember, we said that all antidepressants can actually increase risk for suicide. So we need to monitor all clients really, really closely, especially in those first few weeks of treatment. And next, do you remember the three symptoms associated with serotonin syndrome? It's easy. We just need to remember our three S's, and that is going to be sweating, shaking, and strange behavior. And lastly, which supplement must be avoided in clients taking antidepressants due to the increased risk for serotonin syndrome? Well, that is going to be our St. John's wort. This is an herbal supplement that also has serotonergic properties. And so taking it with an antidepressant is going to significantly increase the risk for serotonin syndrome. All right, we're moving right along to our tricyclic antidepressants or TCAs. And this class includes amitriptyline, imipramine, and nortriptyline. Now the NCLEX loves to test safety concerns with this drug class, with the biggest being cardiac toxicity and its ability to cause dangerous dysrhythmias. This is a big reason why this medication class isn't widely used anymore and also why it can be so fatal in overdose. And it's for this reason that all clients should get an ECG before starting therapy on a tricyclic antidepressant. And we also need to teach them to never double up on their dose. Orthostatic hypotension is also a common side effect of this drug class. So we need to be sure to teach clients to change positions really slowly to avoid dizziness and falls. Now, one of the hallmark side effects of tricyclic antidepressants is their anticholinergic side effects. So think dry eyes, dry mouth, urinary retention, and constipation. So we can encourage fluids, fiber, and sugar-free candy to help alleviate these symptoms. And finally, tricyclic antidepressants can cause sedation. So they're best taken at bedtime so that clients can sleep through the drowsiness instead of struggling with it throughout the day. Our last major antidepressant group is our MAOIs. These are our monoamine oxidase inhibitors. And examples include isocarboxazid, phenylzine, and selegiline. Now these aren't prescribed very often anymore because they come with a ton of risks, restrictions, and side effects, but the NCLEX still loves to test on them because they come with two major safety considerations. First is the risk for hypertensive crisis, and the red flag symptom for this is a pounding headache. Now this can happen when clients eat tyramine-containing foods, and this happens because tyramine is a potent vasoconstrictor. Normally it's broken down by monoamine oxidase, but when we inhibit monoamine oxidase, tyramine builds up in the system, causing intense and widespread vasoconstriction, which leads to dangerously high blood pressure. So the NCLEX is really likely to ask you about which foods a client taking an MAOI needs to avoid. So look for the tyramine containing foods like salami, aged cheese, beer, and wine. The second major safety concern is serotonin syndrome. MAOIs cannot be combined with any other serotonergic drugs. This is going to include medications like our SSRIs, our tricyclic antidepressants, supplements like St. John's wort, or even tryptin medications that we use for migraines. Monoamine oxidase is responsible for breaking down serotonin and inhibiting it makes serotonin levels rise quickly and possibly to dangerous levels. And that's what triggers serotonin syndrome. So here's the rule that you need to know. If a client is switching from an MAOI to another antidepressant, we need at least a two week washout period to allow all of that MAOI to leave the system before starting the new medication. Finally, we just need to cover the miscellaneous antidepressants you might see on the NCLEX, and that is going to include our bupropion and mirtazapine. Now, bupropion works by increasing dopamine and norepinephrine, which can be really helpful for treating depression. But the big NCLEX testable point you need to know about this medication is that it can lower seizure threshold. This means we need to avoid giving bupropion to any client with a history of seizures or any client at high risk for seizures, like those with an eating disorder or those who are withdrawing from alcohol. Mirtazapine is an antidepressant often used in clients who need help with sleep and appetite. It causes sedation, so we need to make sure to teach clients not to mix it with alcohol, benzodiazepines, or other CNS depressants due to the risk of oversedation. And it also stimulates appetite, which means weight gain is a really common side effect of this medication. And that may or may not be a good thing depending on your client's specific situation. All right, it's time for our last NCLEX quick check. What must clients taking MAOIs avoid consuming? Well, remember, these clients need to avoid tyramine-containing foods because consuming foods with tyramine can cause a hypertensive crisis. And lastly, what population should avoid bupropion? 
Well, remember, bupropion can lower the seizure threshold, so we don't want to give this to any client who is at risk for seizures. All right, you are all set for antidepressants on the NCLEX. Thank you so much for joining me.